Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you the new area that the Mandalorian Forge is in to make helmets. Um, it used to be on Ilum, but in this most recent update they changed it to the Deadlands of Tatooine. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get there. Uh, be sure to not grab your Beskar actually. Don't grab your materials yet because there is a bank right next to it now, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about losing it, you can just take it out once you get there. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. First things first, we're going to go to Mos Frelzo on Tatooine. And then we're going to head to these big old like arches, they look like bones almost. Now be careful on this bridge because you can fall through and die um, on the sides, they're like death pits basically. Uh, just be careful about that, I guess. Now we're almost to the area of which we're going to find this place in. It's called the Deadlands, I believe. It is a new area that was added pretty recently. Um, I believe it's, it was just added for this update pretty much. Um, so you're going to be able to find a few things here. Um, I haven't fully explored it yet, but when I do, I'll post a video about it. But it's an extremely treacherous area, and it is where you find the armor now. Uh, they removed it from Ilum, it is now on Tatooine. And in the Deadlands. So you're going to jump up this pillar here, you're going to back, you're going to have to like back pedal up it. Um, and then you're going to have to use a double jump on each of these here, on these ledges here. Um, so it might take a little while, but just take your time. You definitely don't want to fall. And it's important to note you don't have to bring your best guard on the entire trip here because it's there's a bank right outside the armorer. Um, I didn't know that until recently, so I had to re-record this. But um, there is a bank, so don't worry about doing all this parkour with all this best guard in your inventory. It's unnecessary, and you might lose it. Anyways, um, this bridge. Uh, just dodge all the holes, obviously, um, and save at least a double jump to get over this next part here. As you can see, you don't need to do the roll, but I would recommend using both a double jump and a roll on all these jumps that I'm about to do, just in case that you fall through. And be very conscious of your cooldowns on your double jump and roll to make sure you're not taking a jump that you're not actually going to be able to make since your cooldown hasn't refreshed. Once you get to these planks here, balancing on this beam, you're going to go left. You can go straight here. There's probably some other stuff that direction, but it's not the right way. So we're going to go left. There's a zip line going above this trail. Um, and now we're going to make this jump here. I don't... Actually, this is one of the more hairy jumps right here. One of the more difficult ones. And then we're going on to uh, soon to be on the hardest jump, or one of the harder jumps. I consider the harder ones the ones where you have to make like a full like double jump and roll like a big leap otherwise you can just double jump across or like just simply jump across certain things anyways here it is this is probably the the most precarious jump as long as you use a double jump and a roll while sprinting you're fine um, but you just got to be careful because it's pretty big gap there so if you don't use all your jumps and roll you're not going to get past it same thing with this one here you're going to want to go to the edge be sprinting and double jump and roll and you'll get across it and now finally we're on the correct like island um, we can go down the left here and just slowly trickle down this wall here there's a little bit of parkour but you really don't have to bother with that unless you're trying to get out um, and here is the bank right here. You can talk to this guy and open your bank and grab your Beskar or your Duras deal or whatever you need to grab. Um, and then I will show you the entrance. Um, it's right around the corner here. Um, you will see this bounty hunter insignia right here on the wall. 
It's right around this area in this corner. And if you touch the wall here, it just opens right up. Now I'll show you the helmets you can get. So the first is the Captain. It's one of the more expensive helmets and it's new. It's pretty cool. Um, standard is pretty, eh, it's boring. Uh, Dejarin is the helmet that I have. I think it's pretty cool. It's, it's true to the one in the Mando series. Uh, Executioner, I see a lot of people rocking this, but it's not really my taste. Um, Conqueror is really cool because its base color right here is black. Um, you see these light gray colors are where your helmet color will be applied. Um, so on this one, obviously, it's applied everywhere. On this one, it's applied everywhere. So like, just keep in mind, the light gray is what your helmet color will be. So if you have a red helmet, it'll appear on the sides here, on the Neo Crusader, which is a goofier helmet. Um, and then there's Dread in here, which is a knight helmet. It costs three Beskar, but some people think it's worth it. Um, heavy, another cool helmet right here, definitely a solid choice. And finally, another goofy helmet, uh, the Ultimate Helmet, which kind of looks like Dream. And yeah, that's about it for all the uh, Mandalorian helmets and the Mandalorian Forge location. If you have any other video ideas, put them down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.